Good morning. Today is, I don't even, on my calendar. Today is what? Tuesday, December 3rd. Um, good morning. It is 4.28 a.m. Um, I'm up. I don't know why I'm up. I woke up and I was like, forget it, I'm up. I think I went to bed at like 12. So anyway, this podcast just came to me as I woke up this morning. I think it was because when I went to bed, someone had written on one of my Instagram things about there was this video of my dad and I and it was sort of like I think that not having a dad is the deciding factor I guess you know people think that not having a particular parent around is maybe a deciding factor on success or failure or something like that and I have always told people that you know there are really no perfect stories and it's so difficult in the land of social media to give you the 500 page background on everybody's family and where you really come from. But I wanted to do this to tell you a few more things, I guess, about me and to, to also help you stop making excuses and get ahead by getting over it. Um, And so I made five points. I'm going to try to go as quickly as I can. But number one is just family. Most of us as young African Americans have experienced generational trauma, meaning from generation to generation, something has happened to us. Most of us didn't come from families with money, with structure, with order. And for those who did, kudos to you. Um, my parents got married when they were like 18 and like 19 or 18 and 20. I think they were a year and a half apart. Um, my mom had her first kid when she was 19. My brother, she had me when she was 23. Um, so I was raised by some really, really, really young adults. And I told the young lady who about in the video that she sees me with my dad, if you watch it, he says that he is blown away of what I have accomplished with very little support um, from either of them. And my parents divorced, are happily divorced. I encouraged and supported their divorce when I was um, 18. They almost got back together right before the divorce. And I was like, if you get back together, I will never speak to either of you. That's how chaotic and dramatic um, growing up with them together was. I mean, it was two, you know, my dad's from Watts and his dad died when he was 15. And, you know, my mom, it just, it was, I just remember saying to myself, I cannot wait to get out of this. And I cannot wait to end this cycle of like emotional bullshit and stuff and gunk, you know, um, how we, as a people, we just have so much. So if you didn't know your mother and you didn't know your father, or you don't have the best relationship with them, that's still not an excuse. Like I have had, um, I've, I've had challenges in my relationships, relationship with both of my parents. I just made the decision to compartmentalize and to make it work for me. I can't not live life harping on the fact that my mom is not this kind of mom or my dad is not this kind of dad or that they didn't, you know, hug me and this and that enough or whatever, whatever shit you can make up in your mind that you feel like you wanted or you deserve or you need um, is not an excuse. But what I will say is to get help. Um, it's something that I don't think enough black people talk about. It's something that I don't think enough black people feel comfortable about, but there's nothing wrong with seeking professional help to help you navigate through the murkiest part of your life, which is this family thing. That is really kind of like the root of who we are, why we do all of the things that we do kind of stems to like where we were raised. And I didn't even realize that. And so I go, I've been in professional therapy. I've mentioned it a ton of times. I'm actually going today. Uh, I go once a week for an hour and I've been going for a little bit over a year now. When I tell you that it has been absolutely life changing, though I was compartmentalizing and kind of just pushing forward, this has helped me be even better with how I process the way that I grew up. And so, um, 
like something I'll share personally is that that I discovered in the very beginning is that I, I do what they call overfunction. So because my parents would fuss and fight all the time, when they would start fussing and fighting and breaking up and this and that, I would just like dive into my work. So when something's bothering me, instead of just being bothered, I then dive into work. Like, so I overfunction. I will, I mean, I would be in the first grade, like finishing third grade workbooks. I just work and work and work and work. And so I still kind of do that, but now I know why I do it. And I try to like, instead of using the work to cover up, you know, trauma, I try to like address it, which, so I've gotten a lot better at that. But anyway, we could be here all day talking about that, but family drama, not knowing your mom, definitely not knowing your dad is definitely not an excuse to not, you know, do what you should be doing. Number two, you don't have any money. We've talked about this ad nauseum. I think I've, the last several podcasts that I've done have taken away your excuses for not having money. People keep asking me time and time again, who funded my business? I did. I did. And I did not come from money. I funded it myself. And so going back to your savings equals freedom, stop trying to keep up with people you can't keep up with because they're not even keeping up with them. And that's not an excuse. Number three, let's face it, you're lazy. Most of you are lazy. And I'm not saying that to beat you up, but I'm really trying to raise the awareness. And I raise the awareness with people who work with me, work for me, the young ladies that I mentor. If you don't have any children, there's no reason why you shouldn't be up studying, preparing, why you can't work two days a day. If you have a job, it's eight hours, why you can't sandwich that with four hours before you go to work and after you get off work working on you. So you have eight hours for you, eight hours for whoever, but that's not an excuse. You're lazy. And even, you know, those who have kids, they have to get up anyway. So even more props to you guys, the parents out there. Um, you haven't really done anything. It's like you see so many people complaining. You're, you're ready to lean on the fact that you don't know your dad. But let's keep it real. You haven't even done anything to succeed. So you don't know your dad. But why haven't you focused on your education? Why aren't you reading any books today? Why aren't you do, doing any research? Why aren't you networking? Focus on that. Not the not having money. The not having this. Like... You have to do something. And then beyond being lazy, you have given up. Like how many times have you given up on something? I have this theory. I've shared it with plenty of people. If you haven't tried it consistently for three years, you don't get to make an excuse that it doesn't work. I think that anything you do, you have to get three full years of your dedicated attention to see any results. And so it's called, you know, the three year plan. If you have, if you've done it for three years, you haven't seen anything, then you can, you know, potentially say that because let's just face it, some stuff just doesn't work out. But if you are just halfway doing it, you touch it every now and then, you're not full throttle every day for three years. We don't even want to hear about it. Just, we don't like stop being lazy, get up and do what you need to do every single day. I tell you, I hate exercising. I hate going to the gym, but I go, you know, it's like, I have a battle with, I have a battle with myself every morning that I go to the gym. I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to be here, but I'm going because number one, it is an exercise in discipline, doing something that I absolutely do not want to do. Um, and it, it, it helps you get to look good. It's healthy. You know, I just have to do it. Number four, which is so, is this being petty and being dramatic uh, thing that we women, let's, African-American women, I think we can kind of get involved in. And I've seen, when I, the kind of petty stuff that goes on just drives me nuts. We have, a, I have a rule. I'm like, we have a rule. We all have a rule and I have a rule in my office, in everyone that works for me is that, it is a no petty zone. You know what a no petty zone is? Is that if something happens, I don't want to hear about 
why it happened. Please do not bury me in the details of, you know, Tanisha because she came in late or because she was sleeping or because she did this. This is what happened and now this is the problem. Blah, blah, blah. All that stuff before is gossip. I don't care about that. I care about the problem and what you're going to do to fix it. So if you've discovered the problem with Tanisha, then it is now your problem. We all have to learn to take ownership of things and stop wanting to point the blame because pointing blame doesn't solve problems. All it is is gossip and it's petty. It's, it's silly and it's childish. And once you cut out the pettiness, people learn that they have to work together. So when you know that tattling gets you nowhere, tattling on someone to me gets you nowhere. So I don't like it. It's wasted time. It doesn't solve problems. And you have to stop that too. If you're at work and somebody's not doing this, just work and solve the problems. You don't need to be telling on anybody. Just get the work done. Get out of there so you can be working on your stuff, your business, and understand that gossip and drama is designed to distract you. So I know when people start gossiping about me, that that is to get me to take my eyes off the prize. So people get mad when I don't care that they don't like me. I don't care. I'm sorry, but I don't care. Number one, people will dislike you for reasons that have nothing to do with you. Number two, I always say criticism and you know applause i take it all with the same grain you cannot be overly worked up on people applauding you or people criticizing you so you know you can't get caught up in that and then you have to understand that sometimes you just have to burn a bridge you cannot be liked by everybody you cannot be the best friend of everybody i am very much aware of the fact that there are people that don't like me. They probably won't ever like me. And I don't, that's fine with me. Number one, it reminds me that I'm being true to myself. Being true to myself means I'm not for everybody. You know, I'm an acquired taste. And everybody, if you're out here being an individual, you should be too. So I don't make any apologies for that. I cannot win them all. You just can't. I cannot win over every person. So I'm not going to waste my time on this petty BS and this drama that people like to get, you know, carry on. Think about the amount of time you spend on the phone listening to what somebody that's not even thinking, you guys are talking about somebody that's not even thinking about you. Like, think about what they're doing. They are getting ahead while you have made excuses. So um, my fifth one is question every single feeling that you have when you are making an excuse. So if you, any of the excuses that I have said, question them in the past, you know, and I still do that to this day. And it's like, I, it's, I call it the, is it true challenge? So we can make things up in our head. I have done that too. You think someone doesn't like you, or you think your boss is this and that, or you think somebody meant this or your boyfriend you think this is how he feels but you don't really know if it's true like somebody didn't answer their your phone or say they didn't text you back and it's like oh so and so didn't text me back because they're mad is that true or did you make that up how do you know they're mad you don't know that that's not true so if it's not if you can't prove it if you cannot prove it then you should not believe it. And the same thing about yourself. If you, you're this, you're that, all the stuff you've clouded your head with that has literally held you down, those anchors, if you can't prove the anchors that are sinking you, you I challenge you to take them off today and watch yourself rise to the top. So... That is my podcast for this early morning. Um, you guys have an awesome week, awesome month, and uh, stop making excuses. We're going to get ahead by getting over it. Bye.